everyone, welcome to Coders Camp. We are at 20th day of June Lead Code Challenge, and the problem we are going to cover in this video is swim in rising water. So, this is another interesting problem where the input given here is a two dimensional array grid, and we have to return the amount of time we take to reach from the very first cell to the bottom right cell. So, here the numbers in grid array represent the elevation in the land. And the problem statement says, at time t, the depth of the water everywhere is t. And we can travel four directionally adjacent square if and only if the elevation of both squares individually are at most t. So let's understand this problem with an example. So here is our given first example in the problem statement. Consider this grid is a land. And the values given are the elevations. So at the first square, there is no elevation. And in the second square, consider the land is elevated up to some to level 2. And in the grid 2, it is up to level 1. And in grid 4, up to level 3. So we are allowed to swim between the grid to grid. And when we can swim, only if the water level is above or equal to elevation that is if the level of elevation is 2 here then the water must be up to 2 or above 2 so that we can swim same way if the elevation here in the grid 1 comma 0 1 comma 1 is 1 here so the water must be at level 1 and or more than level 1 so that we can swim from 0 comma 0 to 1 comma 1 so at first, we don't have water here. They said it starts raining and for every t, the water level will be t. That is, at zeroth time, there will be zero water at all the grids. At same way, at time 1, consider this may be for 1 minute or 1 hour. They did not mention the measurement of the time, but 1 unit. At 1 unit, the level of water at all the grids will be 1. So, consider the same example. At time 1, you have water 1 at 0, 0 and water uh, level 1 at 1, 1. So that you can swim from 0, 0 to 1, 1 as the elevation is covered by water. But you cannot travel to the other two cells because the water level will be at 1 but the elevation is at 2 which means there is a land above water level. So in that case you cannot swim. You still have to wait till it reaches the level of land so that you can swim. So yes, understanding all this, let's get into the solution part. So now we are going to start from the cell 0, 0 at time 0. So now you have two options to travel that is from 0, 0 you can travel to 0, 1 or 1, 0. Since you can travel only four directionally and this is the leftmost cell, you have only two options left. So out of this, if you want to travel to 0, 1, then you must wait for two seconds. And if you want to travel to 1, 0, you must wait for one, one time unit. Because at time 1, the level of water will be 1. So you can travel to this cell alone. So consider at time 1, we are traveling to this cell. So now, right now, we travel from 0, 0 to 1 comma 0 where the level of water is 1. So you have to reach 1 comma 1 where the level of water is 3. So at time 2 all the grids will be having the water level to 2. So in that case from 1 comma 0 you have only one option left to travel that is 1 comma 1 because you cannot visit to the cell again that is go back to 0 comma 0. So but you cannot travel to 1 comma 1 as well because the water level is at 2 at time 2, you still have to wait one more second to reach your 3 comma 3. So we are waiting for one more second and the time is 3. So at time 3, the water level will come to 3. So you can now swim from 1 comma 0 to 1 comma 1. So the maximum time it took for us to travel from 0 comma 0 to 1 comma 1 is 3. So that is what is our output. So to understand this problem better, we are going to see one more example. So this is the second example given in the problem statement. As usual, we are going to start from the cell 0, 0. So you have options to travel to either this cell with water level 1 or this cell with elevation 24. At time 0, you cannot swim to any other cell. At time 1, you can swim to the cell with value 1. As the elevation is 1, 
at time one, the water level will be one at all the cells and you can reach here. Consider you traveled to that cell and from here at the time two, you are traveling to the next cell and at time three, you are traveling to the next neighboring cell and at time four, you reached here, time five, you reached here. So from five, you have two options, either to reach the level with 21 or the elevation level with 60. So to travel to 21, you must wait till the 21st time or to tra travel to 16, you must wait till the 16th time. So considerably 16 is the lesser time. So we are waiting till 16 and we are still roaming around somewhere in 5 till we reach the 16th time and at 16th time we are reaching 16. So now from 16 you have again two options either to swim to 20 or to 15. So if you have to wait to travel to 20 you have to wait till 20th second and straight away from 20th second you can travel to or swim to 6. As 6 is having the lower elevation, it will be already filled with more water. So you can directly swim from 20 to 6. So that is one option. For that you have to wait till 20th second or 20th time. So from 16, you are planning to travel or swim to 15. Because 15 is lesser elevation compared to 16. Then it must be having water more than 15 level. So you are traveling to 15 at the same time on the 16th second itself because you don't have to really wait for the water to fill up. Again from 15 to 14, 14 to 13, 13 to 12 as these things are indicating the elevations they must be having water already higher than the elevation at the 16th time. So we don't really have to wait we can simply travel to 11 to 10 again goes to 9, 8, 7 and 6. So you have reached your last cell at the 16th time itself. So that is the minimum time you can take to reach the last cell and that is going to be our output. So by now you must have understood how are we going to approach this. This is a very simple BFS technique. As usual we are going to implement a BFS which is going to track all the neighbors and add them to our queue and explore further its neighbors and whichever reach at the earlier time we are going to return that time as our output but here instead of using a normal queue we are going to implement a priority queue why because we are going to pick the lesser elevation ones first and then travel through that because from the two options we had from the very first cell we either to travel to 1 or 24 we picked 1 same way from 5 we had two options to travel to 21 or 16 we picked 16 same way from 16, we had options to travel to 15 and 20, but we picked 15 so that we arrived at our solution earlier. So in order to arrive at a solution earlier, we need to pick the lesser elevation ones first and then move to the higher ones. So instead of a normal queue, we are going to maintain a priority queue. So in our priority queue, we are going to add an integer array, which consists of three elements where i, j, and value i and j are nothing but the cells coordinates and value is nothing but the elevation value inside it so every time we explore it for example first time we are going to add 0 comma 0 comma 0 as we are going to start from the 0 comma 0 cell with elevation 0 and next we are going to pick the neighboring cell and update 0 comma 0 comma 1 so here 1 is not the elevation but the time it takes to reach that particular grid. Again, 0, 0, 24 is another option where we have to wait till 24th second to reach here. Same way we are going to explore its neighbors and its neighbors and we update the time accordingly. So here the time is nothing but this value in the array we pull from the queue. So this value is nothing but the time we took to reach the cell. So this is going to be max of the new grid we reach comma the current grid we are. So if suppose you are at the cell with 16. So in that case even if you travel to 15, 14 or 13 you must have waited till 16th time to reach that 16th grid. So how much ever cells you travel 16 is going to be the time. So in that case if you calculate the neighbor it is going to be 16 comma 15 
and 16 comma 14 and 16 comma 7 and 16 comma 6 every time 16 is going to be assigned to our time so yes hope you're understanding this solution this is going to take big o of n square into log n time complexity so let's go to the code now so yes first let's declare the basics as i said we need a priority queue and in comparator we are checking the values or putting in the values based on the third value in the array in ascending order and first we are going to add our 0 comma 0 comma 0 which is nothing but the value at the very first cell so once we added that we are going to maintain another array which is visited which is going to keep track of already visited uh, grids in our grid so first we are going to start from the first cell so we are updating it to true and we are going to iterate until our queue becomes empty and we are going to explore and add all possible neighboring cells four directionally so that we have a array direction and we are going to iterate that array so that we create new four coordinates x comma y will be the new neighboring coordinate and we are checking for the base basic conditions edge conditions if none of the calculated new neighbor cells coordinates or edge condition we are going to skip it then we are checking if it is not already visited then we are going to visit it so uh, we update the boolean array to true and we calculate the time as i said the max of new neighboring cells elevation comma the current elevation whichever is the max that will be the time being updated and if we reach the rightmost bottom cell then we return whatever the time calculated so far if not we are going to add its neighbor so finally return time and let's run and try finally return zero yes so let's submit yes the solution is accepted so thanks for watching the video hope i made it clear if you like the video hit like subscribe and let me know in comments thank you